Letitia James under fire gets another inquiry this time from Congress and they're asking her about this guy. You know his name, Matthew Colangelo, former Obama prosecutor, former Biden prosecutor, former Letish prosecutor, now is working for Alvin Bragg. This guy's been bouncing around, prosecuting Trump everywhere he goes for everybody he works for. And so now there's a question about his role in all of this and Tish James, who took her shoes off in the courtroom, stinking up the entire building, is the subject subject of this letter comes from Jim Jordan. We'll see what he says about this in the aftermath. But here is what the letter went over to Tish looked like. It came out from the Committee on the Judiciary, House of Representatives, Congress of these United States to the Honorable pff, Letitia James. Dear Attorney James, Big Tish, Stinky Feet Tish, says the Committee on the Judiciary is conducting oversight of people like you, who we think are politically motivated prosecutors. And since last year, we've had a number of situations where popularly elected prosecutors prosecutors who campaigned for office like you did on the back of prosecuting Trump, you engage unprecedented abuse of prosecutorial authority. They say the indictment of a former president and the current leading candidate for that office has happened under your watch. New York County DA's office, Alvin Bragg, is engaged in one of these prosecutions right now that happens to be politicized. And that is led in part by this guy. Remember him? Matthew Colangelo, who used to work for you, Tish, former prosecutor in your office and a subsequent senior DOJ official who worked for Biden before he went back over to work for Bragg. Now, given the perception that the DOJ is assisting Bragg's politicized prosecution, we write to request information related to what your office knows about Colangelo's employment with the New York AG's office. Here's more. Mr. Colangelo and his recent employment history demonstrates his obsession with a particular person rather than prosecuting a crime. Who could that be? At the New York Attorney General's office, Mr. Colangelo, who for some time held the title of of chief counsel for federal initiatives, he ran investigations into Trump. He led the wave of state litigation against Trump administration policies. On January 20th, the first day of Biden's administration, he became the acting associate AG, the number three over there at the DOJ. Upon confirmation of Attorney General Vanita Gupta, Colangelo then went to be the principal deputy associate AG. Then in December, Alvin Bragg brought him on, beefed up his office by hiring Mr. Colangelo to fill the void left after Pomerantz and Kerry Dunn left. Bragg hired Colangelo to, quote, jumpstart the investigation of Trump. Why? Because he's taken on Trump multiple times. Mr. Colangelo is now the lead prosecutor in Trump's trial. He leapfrogged back to the front of the pack. And there's a good argument that this case was dead without him, okay? Pomerantz and Kerry Dunn, they resigned because Bragg said no. So they left. Maybe they're just terrible prosecutors or idiots or something, but they left. He did not get the cattle prod. A Biden prosecutor comes down from the DOJ, suddenly the case comes back. DA Bragg's prosecution concerns federal subject matter that is identical to the same thing the DOJ closed in 2018, raising concerns that some state prosecutor is trying to relitigate something that the feds already declined. Now, Bragg's prosecution relies heavily on Michael Cohen, his so-called star witness, a convicted felon and someone with demonstrable bias against Trump. Cohen pleaded guilty to lying to Congress in 2018. In 2019, when he testified before the Democrats in the House, again, lying six times times to the Democrats. In the years since, Cohen has been vocal about his deeply personal animus against Trump. And so Bragg's prosecution of Trump has serious consequences. The fact that a former Biden official whose previous employment led a wave of litigation against Trump, the fact that he's the leading prosecutor only adds to the perception that Biden sent him to your office and that this is politicized and weaponized by Joe. And so accordingly, we need the following from you. We want all documents and communications from the period of January 1, 2017 to 2021, anything from Colangelo to any employees. We want to know what they talked about as it related to Trump, the Trump organization, any other entities owned by Trump. We want to know what Colangelo said to the AG's office from this time frame. about the same. We want to know about documents from the DNC or Joe Biden to Colangelo. And we want all the personnel files that are related to Colangelo's hiring from your office, Stinky Foot Tish. Please provide the information requested as soon as possible, but no later than May 29th. SCOTUS is recognized we're very powerful for Congress and they don't exercise it. And so pursuant to our powers, we are investigating you, Tish. If you have any questions, give us a call. Sincerely, your friend, Jim Jordan, chairman of the Judiciary Committee. So they're inquiring into Colangelo. I don't know that's going to go anywhere. I mean, honestly, the trial is going to be over probably on Tuesday. We'll get a verdict maybe next week. So that is the letter that went over to her office. Now, I think it is very important to get to the bottom of it. He is the thread that connects all the cases and he seems like a prime operator.
operator there. So Jim Jordan was out talking about some of this. He got asked about what his position is with Colangelo in this investigation, and he is explaining here. No, it sure would, and that's what Mr. Colangelo had before he went up to work for Alvin Bragg. But Sean, it's even worse because he started with Letitia James. So he went after President Trump with the state attorney general. Then he comes and works the number three position in the Justice Department, in the Biden Justice Department. And then he goes back up to New York to work for Alvin Bragg and be the chief prosecutor against President Trump in this ridiculous trial where Michael Cohen, the convicted perjurer, the guy who's lied multiple times to everybody, is the star witness. Now, didn't the issue of, for example, you're the chairman of a committee. We have, last time I checked, we have three co-equal branches of government and that your branch of government, you're a member of Congress, the legislative branch, that you would have oversight over the executive branch and that, that would be part of Congress's role, correct? Sure is. One of our constitutional duties is to do oversight of the executive branch and the agencies that fall under our jurisdiction, Homeland Security, and of course the Department of Justice. Attorney General said they want to be independent and impartial. Okay, that's we're supposed to evaluate. That's part of our oversight. What we do know is you've charged President Trump with a crime on the classified documents issue and you didn't charge Joe Biden. Are you really being impartial? Particularly when on page one of Robert Hurd, the special counsel's report, he says Joe Biden knowingly kept and Joe Biden knowingly disclosed classified information. On page 231 of his report, he said Joe Biden had strong motivations for ignoring classified procedures. He knew he was writing a book, a book for which he got paid an $8 million advance. So we have motive, an $8 million motive. We have the elements of the crime met, but Robert Hur says we're not going to bring a charge. We're not going to recommend charges because he's a forgetful elderly gentleman. Okay, so give us all the evidence. And by the way, Joe Biden's already waived executive privilege when he released everything, including the transcript. We just want the best evidence so we can evaluate if, in fact, the Department of Justice is truly being independent and impartial, which is our job under the Constitution. That's why we held him in contempt and it passed out a committee earlier today. And they, I think, are being useful. I know we all get tired, myself included, believe me, of all the letters from Congress. Letter after letter after letter. It's like, all right, all righty, do something about it. You have the power of the purse, defund them, do something. But we're getting closer day by day. I think that this is politically useful, even if they don't get the audio. It shows that they don't want you to hear it. It shows that there is something very bad in that audio recording that they would rather Americans never hear. And so the Republicans will be able to use that. Hopefully Trump gets that, you know, out. He'll say, my depositions are all over the place. They played my depositions in trial. E. Jean Carroll deposed me. All so just release Joe's audio too. Hopefully they continue to hit that. And it's going to, I think, make the Biden camp look a little bit weak if they don't release the audio. Why are you covering it up? Now, in this case, there's a universal thread that connects all of these lawfare political prosecutions. And it seems to be the Democrats, right? It's people like Matthew Colangelo who are at the center of this orchestrating and tipping the scale on every one of these investigations going around state to state, you know, setting up like little franchises as he just prosecutes Trump, the one man prosecution orchestrated by the Democrats birthed out of Obama. We're going to be here continuing to cover it, my friends. Thank you for subscribing as we do. Thank you for also checking out some of our awesome links in the description below. We'd love to see you become a member. We do extra members only streams and we stream on Saturday. So come on over and join us. It'd be great to have you there. We will be back here as well on the next one.